please rise. Blessed be the one holy living God. Glory to you forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of 2 Samuel, chapters 11 and 12. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one from his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him, but took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he has done this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are that man. Thus the Lord, says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, 
and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 51 responsively by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians chapter four. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive and gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the, the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ we must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery by their craftiness and deceitful scheming but speaking the truth in love we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give, to, will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. If I could have my young friends come forward, I believe Mr. Tony has a story to share with you all. One, two, three, yes, okay. Well, I guess you can manage to do that, maybe. Okay, hi Benjamin, thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Abide in me, Lord Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. When Henry couldn't have been one, years, one year old, um, well before one year old, I think, um, we had been teaching him sign language, uh, which has sort of been a kind of a baby sign language. I don't know how long that has been around, not to put someone on the spot, but um, Deb, did you teach your kiddos baby sign? Was it a thing back then? Or Okay, so it's sort of, I guess, a recent thing, 10-ish or so years, uh, and at least. And so we had been teaching Henry some different sign language because, you know, he didn't have words yet. And we... It, it was kind of fun. So this is the one story that I remember that is the most endearing. The sign for more is this, okay? If you didn't know that, those of you who have young grandchildren now may already know that one. Um, but there was a time that he was at the park with Richard, and it was a beautiful fall day, and they were swinging, and he was young enough, he needed to be swinging in one of those bucket swings, right, that sort of come up around the waist, and the legs sort of dangle out the front, and they had been swinging and swinging, and it was just a gorgeous day, and um, they were enjoying themselves, and Henry was just kind of nodding, nodding, nodding off, about to fall asleep. Well, right before he falls asleep, he sort of looks up, and he says, <laughs> and he swings a lot. There must have been something so peaceful about that, and it left him wanting more, more, more. 
I also think about baby birds in their nest in the springtime. And if you've been lucky enough to observe them, their mother is going out and finding all sorts of food and worms, and they're just new little babes and little hatchlings. They can't even get outside of their nest. And if you've ever seen little videos, sometimes you can see videos or be lucky enough to watch them out a window or something, and you just see their little heads all up, their mouths open, chirping, 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 more, more, more. I need more food. I need more food. There's something about it. Please take care of me. Make it so. I think the people that were following Jesus, who rode or got themselves across the lake, they were surprised to find Jesus where they did. Obviously, he had disappeared from them, and they went out searching for him. In fact, they were chasing him around, trying to figure out there was something about him. There was a longing that they had. Absolutely, he had just done these miraculous things and these signs that we heard about last week with the feeding of the 5,000, and he was, was filling their bellies, shall we say. But I think there was also something more. Their, their, their curiosity was piqued. They were longing to know and to be in the presence of this Jesus who somehow things, I think, felt different in his presence. And so they were chasing after him, and that's the encounter that we hear in our gospel today. They were chasing after him. They were wanting more. They were wanting more food. I'm not sure they really grasped exactly the type of food that Jesus was talking about. Yes, he had filled their bellies, uh, but there was obviously something else going on for those who had been following along. And in fact, this is the sixth chapter of John. In the second chapter, Jesus has already turned water to wine. And in the fourth chapter, he's already met the woman at Samaria at, from Samaria at the well who says, give me this water always. I need more of it. So there are signs and there are miracles leading up to this story for the listeners of John's gospel if they were paying attention. And yet they still have questions. They're still in a bit of a haze. They haven't really put things together. And so they go and equate the manna that Jesus, the bread that Jesus has just given them uh, in the previous story, and they're saying, well, yes, we've had manna too. Moses, Moses fed us manna, fed our people manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus says, okay, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. This is bread from heaven, not just manna in the wilderness, not just the loaves that I just gave you, fed you, filled, filled your bellies that were sort of gnawing, that hunger. Yes, I can, I can do that. I can make those things happen, but there's more to it. This that I'm talking about, in case you haven't figured it out yet, is bread from heaven. And now, all of a sudden, we are in a completely different realm. Jesus says to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. That's where they were equating these things and remembering as a part of their story. They were saying, but Moses gave us this bread from heaven. And Jesus goes on to say, no, 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 no. It was my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. They might have been following him, and they might have been satisfied in the initial pieces of feeling satisfaction in their belly, and there was a sense of curiosity of, this man is different. I think there must have been a dawning, sort of inbreaking and falling on them, but I don't think that they fully grasp it yet. Yes, their collective pieces of their story, their people's story, are coming together. But they're still trying to make sense of it all. But then it's almost like the light flickers. And they say, sir, give us this bread always. Give us this bread always. 
much like the disciples who struggle at times, I think, to really grasp the fullness of what Jesus, who he is, and what he's up to, I think we, maybe I should speak for myself, I, I honestly don't think I fully grasp all of it either. For we've only had a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. It's this time that we find ourselves living in the already and the not yet. The already in the sense that the kingdom has come and has taken flesh and has lived among us and continues to live within us, proclaiming that death has not the final word. This is the already. And the not yet, though, there is so, 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 so much more to come. The already is only but a foretaste. I like to think that we do grasp this. There's times where I like to think that we do grasp this, that I do grasp this, that I can rationally think through all of this. We are in a post-enlightenment rational world and, and evidence and science and facts, and those are all wonderful and good and necessary things and have given us so many gifts. But there is a certain point in which thinking will only get us so far in our quest for the eternal bread. At a certain point, our experience has to carry us toward our longing for the bread of life, for more bread. Calvin, John Calvin puts it, and I certainly agree with him on this. He says, I would rather experience it than understand it. Ephesians gives us a clear idea of how we can experience a glimpse of this longing. And it's the, the phrasing that the letter to the Ephesians uses is a way of performing the works of God. Because Jesus, if you remember about halfway through the gospel, the followers are saying, how do we perform the works of God? They want to know how this is possible, to which Jesus replies, believe in me. Believe in God who sent me. Believe in the bread that this God offers. Believe it by experiencing it. Allow it to shape you. And then this letter goes on to talk about how we can be shaped into the body of Christ with humility is one of the things that this letter talks about. I think some of us could use more practice in this aspect than others. Sometimes myself is included in that. And I found some good language to think about how to practice this humility that the letter of, to the Ephesians talks about. Phrases such as, thanks for correcting me, I didn't realize that before, or I hadn't thought of it like that or I was wrong about that. This idea of being humble and being open to learning more that perhaps I don't have it all figured out. But then the letter to the Ephesians goes on to say we also need to practice with gentleness and with patience. And I think that is as much for someone at, towards someone else as it is towards ourselves. And throughout all of this, this section in the letter to the Ephesian talks about and undergirding this all is speaking the truth in love. That we can hear the truth spoken to us and that we can speak the truth always in love. Practicing humility, being gentle with each other and with ourselves and having patience with ourselves and each other as a way to bringing about this body of Christ that the letter to the Ephesians talks about. So beloved, may we practice together through love the building of the body, so much so that we become Christ's body here on earth. May we knit together our uniquenesses and our commonalities together, and may that become the works of God.
with humility, with gentleness, and with patience, always balancing speaking the truth in love. Practice, practice, practice. And in our practice, may we experience yet again where the longing for more bread can take us. May we move from here to here, practicing together, so that we can find ourselves in our own ways, responding like those earlier, early followers of Jesus when they said, Sir, give us this bread always. Amen. Please rise and let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, especially President Joe Biden, Governor Kevin Stitt, and Mayor Stan Booker. for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially Al, Caroline, Charlie, Ed, Felicita, Fred, the Hamlin family, Jean, Jeannie, Jennifer, Jerry, Joe, June, Catherine, Kevin, Larry, Les, Lucille, the Matz family, Pat B, Pat R, Richard, Robert K, Roy, Sandra, Sandy M, Scott, Sharon, Sherry, Steve, Sue, and Tammy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and Polson Reed, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, especially St. Luke's Tulsa and St. Peter's Tulsa. For all who serve God in our church. 
for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially birthdays for Elizabeth Fabriga, Luna Beck, and Melissa Beck. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Please kneel. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. <laughs> Welcome, welcome everyone on this semi-cool Sunday morning. <laughs> Please be seated. <laughs> yes. I have uh, two announcements. The first is, uh, if you did not get one of these last Sunday, uh, pick one up today. There's plenty back in the North X. Uh, this is the invitation, a formal invitation to the Farmhand Olympics, which is August 14th, a Saturday from 11 to 2. Uh, it's at the Chambers, yes, Dave has got them right back there. There's directions on, uh, on, on the front of it, okay? That's the very important thing because I was told, don't put it in your GPS or Siri, right, Kimmy? It might take you to the e west side of town, which is the opposite side of town that you need to be on, okay? So think, go east and then hang a right, go south uh, at KSWO uh, News Channel, two miles south, half a mile east. And there may be some orange and black and white things painted somewhere along the way that might guide you. If you see them, then you'll know you're going in the right, in the right way. Uh, but the invitation is to come and have fun for everyone. All you really need to do is bring a chair and wear comfortable clothes that you don't mind getting a little dirty uh, and that you can play some games in. They will be on the back, um, three leg races, there'll be lunch. Uh, and it will be individually prepared. We're not going to be eating out of potlucks and different meals. Kimmy is the sole person who's putting this together. It's at their ranch. They are hosting this for us. So thank you in advance. Come out and just have fun. Do something, try something that you haven't done before, or maybe it's been a while since you've done it. Um, I will be participating in different races, sack races, wheelbarrow races. There are fish to feed, three-legged races, lots of conversation. Uh, everything will be there except you, your lawn chair, and comfortable clothes. Am I forgetting anything, Kimmy? Okay. All right. So here, take one of these, put it on your fridge, okay? It's for uh, everyone to come and um, be together. Uh, and somewhere outside of the church, it's just good sometimes to be together in a different setting and get to spend a little more time with each other. 
So that's that. The second thing I would briefly like to speak on, uh, those of you, you might have seen the diocesan email or Facebook, um, the bishop has, has had um, some comments and thoughts to share uh, based upon the new CDC guidance. And uh, essentially, he is continuing to leave this decision at the local congregational level. We, uh, he's empowered us to make the decision that fits best in our different locations. And so that's what we're doing. I see some people who are wearing masks again. My children will be wearing masks. They're, they'll be back next Sunday. I have a mask in my pocket. I am not wearing a mask because I'm pretty far away here and it's just difficult to, for you all to hear me. Um, at this point, that's where we are. In, ter in terms of communion, um, I have not found, if you have an idea of how to do this, I, I have not found a way to offer communion to you all with the cup and the wine especially that is 100% risk-free, okay? You can have it placed on your tongue or you can have it handed back to you. Um, either one of those ways, there's potential for some contact. So if you are very worried about that, and, and you need to be, and you find yourself in a category where that's something you need to be mindful of, I would ask just to receive the bread only, okay? I, I, that, those are the two methods we have to receive the wine right now. You're always welcome to come up for a blessing. Um, but we are asking if you, um, want to receive, you, you can drink from the common cup, or if you want to receive the bread and the wine together, Glenn will entinct for you, or, uh, and give it back to you, or place it on your tongue, okay? Um, we're continuing to find our way through this. This is not going to be the last time we're going to be talking about this, and I continue to give thanks for all the ways that you all have adapted, have done what you need to do to keep yourselves and your loved ones and members of the church safe, and, and the bishop has essentially said he, he's been proud of how we've handled this, that we know how to take care of ourselves and each other and to the, keep doing that. So whatever makes you feel comfortable and safe, that's what you need to do, all right? If you have any other questions about that, certainly see me after church. Okay, otherwise it's wonderful to be with you all this morning. Let us celebrate the Eucharist together. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts.
please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Please stand, sit, or kneel as is meaningful for you. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, and gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, who are many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Continuing together, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. 